So the hard to kill countdown, the countdown, the hard to kill, the pre-show, what have you, the card has come out and there is borderline outrage (laughs) from the impact faithful, if you will, on social media. And why is there borderline outrage? Because the pre-show has four former world champions on it. And I don't even think people would trip that badly if they didn't follow it up with an announcement that on the hard to kill main card, we are getting PCO versus Dirty Dango. So we got to rewind here a little bit. We get, we have to give Impact some grace because um, I've always said, make the pre-show matter. Uh, and, and I got on that train a couple of years ago when the pre-show was Triple XL versus the Deaners. And I said, how the fuck is this, is this going to make people want to order the show? So I've been saying for a while, you know, um, the pre-show has to matter. And I actually think the pre-show is a great place for the digital media championship. You know, I don't want the digital media championship on the main card. Um, it's a joke title. You know, some people are like, oh, well, it's a title should be on the card. No, like I'm actually okay with the knockouts tag team titles or the digital media championship being on the pre-show because we want to make it matter a little bit. I don't want the X division championship on uh, on there, the knockouts championship. Well, of course that wouldn't be the uh, tag team championships, nothing like that. But the lower, the lower tier titles, digital media knockouts tag, I can, I can dig it. I'm not going to be totally against it, but the pre-show should matter. The problem is the pre-show has three matches on it. So, The first reaction was, well, who the hell's wrestling on the main card? And it almost forecasted how random the hard to kill card might actually be. Because right now it is, right? When you throw in PCO versus Dirty Dango, like no one wants to see that match. And I'm going to read Twitter responses here, okay? And I'm not cutting anything out. I'm just reading down the line, and then I'm going to stop at the first delusional response. So going down, this should be on the pre-show. Cool, but lack of build and just thrown together card for one of the pillar pay-per-views is a bad look. Switch this with Macklin, the Macklin match. This should be on the countdown show. And and this is for the uh, the PCO uh, Dango match. Yeah, this should be on the countdown, to be honest. Rich Swan and Steve Macklin should be on the pay-per-view. Explain how this is more important than Macklin and Swan Scott Demore. Why? Quit throwing together matches just for the sake of putting matches on a pay-per-view. Bad look, Impact Wrestling. This ain't it. Nobody wants to pay to see this. Put this on the countdown. Uh, sorry, there's an ad. Please tell me you have something cooking with this Scott Demore because this makes zero sense to have this on the main card over Kaz and Young versus Edwards and Myers, or even the DMC title match. Well, this is random as heck, but okay. If en- if everyone wants to take this TNA reboot serious, it's time for them to cut some of these older talents and make room for new guys. PCO just signed a new deal, and this is entertaining, but let's try to make new fans instead of running a retirement home. And then the delusional classic cowardly heel versus unbeatable monster. This should be great fun. The five-star match marks don't understand that a wrestling card needs matches like this. Dango is hilarious. Dango is pretty funny. But these aren't the five-star match marks in the comments here. The five-star match marks are watching AEW fucking battle the belts. This is the, the Impact fans, your social media following, the faithful. There's no interest in this. If they, if they announce this for the pre-show, people be like, okay, it's a little random, but whatever. But it's because they announce Rich Swan versus Steve Macklin, and then Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers versus Kaz and Eric Young, uh, Frankie Kazarian and Eric Young, which sounds like a great match. And then Crazy Steve versus Tommy Dreamer. And no one wants to see the Tommy Dreamer match either, but I think a lot of people want to see Crazy Steve win the win the belt, but maybe they don't feel like Crazy Steve. They're confident in Crazy Steve winning a joke title on the main card. I don't know. 
But I think we do have to dial it back a little bit because we want the pre-show to matter. We don't want the Diener versus Triple XL match. You know what I'm saying? My, I think the only real issue I have is that the pre-show is too long because they now it's an hour. They've changed the start time at the show. Like we got it for those of us who bought tickets, they sent an email out. I mean, but that is some of the worst. I, I don't even know what to call it. But anyway, I don't want to watch four hours of wrestling. I know a lot of you guys do. Um, and that's why I stopped ordering AW pay-per-views. I, I don't really watch WWE at all, you know, but when there's when their cards started getting really, really long is when I started kind of like backing off. I don't I don't, I don't want to watch an hour pre-show like I'm OK watching one match. If you give me two, I can I can do that as well. But three and these aren't matches that are, are going to be five minute matches. You know, and I don't know if it's because they feel some kind of pressure because AEW is doing these 20 minute continental classic matches now. And they say, OK, well, we got to run some long ass matches because these aren't going to be short matches. Steve and, and Diener has the possibility to be short, but it's probably not going to be. But you're going to tell me Swan versus Macklin, who they did a they did a false count anywhere match last time to beat each other. And then this tag match with. With Myers and Eddie versus Kazarian and Young, are you gonna? Yeah, these are twenty. You know, I'm probably not twenty, but these are fifteen minute matches. And for me, there in the live audience, I don't want to sit through four hours. I know my kids don't want to. I mean, they're older; they're teenagers. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not bringing five year olds there. Uh, but I, I know them. I know they're going to be tapped out by the end. I, I think it's too much wrestling, personally, especially because. It, it, these are good matches on the pre-show. So I, it's, you, I have a hard time thinking that whatever they're announcing for <laughs> hard to kill with the remaining roster, I'm going to be really overly in, invested in. I think it's going to be more. Um, I have to imagine. I have to, I have to believe the reason this is, is because they are bringing some people in. Um, and the main show is going to be some of the new signees. I, I, ha- I have to believe that, but it's still, it is still coming off very random. And that seems to be the theme the last half year or so, because bound for glory, half that card was really, really random too. You know, it wasn't completely out of left field, but it was a little random. And then everything since then has, has progressively gotten more random and people don't want that from impact. Like AEW fans can do the randomness. They put on matches that mean nothing all the time, but we watch impact because impact has stories And Impact is supposed to be one of the companies that give us a reason to care about the two people fighting each other. You know, so we can't completely shit on it because we don't know what the card main card is going to be. But this is not a good look to have the the pre-show, which I I don't I can't imagine there's a lot of data wrestling wide that someone purchases the pre-show purchases, watches the pre-show, the free pre-show, and then decides at the last minute to order a pay-per-view to pay for it. Like, I think most people have decided well before then if they're going to watch it. I don't think the pre-show really dictates that. I think it's just something that WWE did a long time ago, and not every other company thinks it's just something you've got to do. But I don't really think it's necessary. But if you're trying to give multiple people a payday, that's fine. But to me, it's too much wrestling, and and it is signaling that there's going to be more randomness to come because I, I just have a hard time believing with this, you know, one episode, maybe two that we're getting before hard to kill in January, that they're going to build something that we really care about. Like it just seems, um, I don't think Mike Bailey's doing anything yet. Right. So they're going to bring in some rando to wrestle him probably, you know what I'm saying? So um, I don't want to shit on it too much because we just don't know what's coming. We don't know what the announcements are. We don't know what's in the future, but um, definitely not a good look at the moment. 